Today I'm sharing a little bit of a different video. So I've recorded a ton of different albums I've worked on over the years, and a lot of them are travel albums, which happen to be my favorite kind of albums to create. But a lot of the important pieces of that travel album come from the prep work, which I have never really shown in a YouTube video before. And it's something that I have figured out over time with trial and error and finding ways that are efficient and ways that spark creativity. And it's something that's not often shown in videos. I watch a ton of scrapbook content and love it. But if you're new to scrapbooking or you're new to travel albums or you're just looking to find more ways to put your albums together besides the physical crafting elements, it's hard to find that behind the scenes information. So today I'm going to show you guys literally how I plan, organize my photos, plan out my whole album, and just like my thought process behind it, as well as the literal process. So hopefully this is all working right now, but I think you should be seeing my computer screen, my desktop screen. I have a MacBook Pro, and this is how I do everything. Um, I'm gonna start by saying that I'm a strong believer and there's a many ways to do things, and there's a lot of different ways to get to the same end point. So this is just the way that works for me. It's definitely, I kind of do things not necessarily the most technologically intelligent ways. I think I don't really enjoy reading directions, watching how-to videos. I just like to wing it and I kind of like MacGyver it together for myself. So there's definitely probably better ways potentially to do certain things, but this is a really simple, approachable way that I've found to be really effective for me. So right now you see this little folder just right on my desktop of photos. And these are all the photos from my trip that I've selected. I think it's just under 80 pictures. So I'm hoping to whittle this down a little bit. Um, you might be able to see from the title of this folder that I'm doing an altered journal for this album. And it's all about a trip I took with my family to Utah. So I have a little book. It was kind of like a field journal from the place we were staying. And it was just like a free thing that I saw. And I was like, that's so cool. It'd be really cool to make a scrapbook out of that. So I took one home and that's where I'm going to be making this album. So because of that, I do have like a finite amount of space. So this is a lot of pictures and I want to narrow it down. But before I do that, the album is the size. Each page is 5.5 by 8.5. And I'm going to do a couple of bull-sized photos for sure. So I'm going to go over to Canva and create a new design. But before that, I order my photos. I don't print at home. I order my photos through Persnickety. It's a newer photo ordering place for me. It's been a whole saga. I used to use Costco. They closed down, yada, yada, yada. But now I use Persnickety. I've really liked it so far. And obviously, because I'm going to be printing a photo that is 5.5 by 8.5. I have to find a piece of paper or a printing size that's offered for persnickety that will work with that. It's so like five by seven will be too small. 5.8.25, like it's close. I want to find the smallest size paper, like the cheapest option that will fit my size comfortably. So I think it's going to be a six by 10. So that's a dollar 50 cents each, something to consider. Printing photos gets expensive, but I won't do a ton of full page photos. I just want to do some and I want to know the option. So knowing that this is the size I'm going to have to order, I'm going to create that size in Canva, making sure I'm on inches. And I'm going to click create new design. And now I will know if this will load what size I'm working with. So it's a six by 10, but obviously my photo is going to actually be a 5.5 by 8.5. So I go grab elements and I'll just grab a square like this. Oh, I don't want to click that. Just click a square and then you can adjust the size of the square and it shows you as you adjust what size it's at. So I'm going to create this as a 5.5 by 8.5. So 5.5 this way. Okay, I think that's 5.5. I didn't see. Yeah, 5.5 by 8.5 and I'm leaving a little bit of 
area around, like rather than having it butted right up against the edge, I'm centering it because I found that sometimes when I take them off of Canva and I upload them to the photo ordering site I use, it like crops it like the teeniest bit, even though this should be the right size. This just gives me a little bit of wiggle room, like some safety. If it does crop, I don't lose any of the size of my actual photo. So this is just for now, you'll see this, and then we'll go back to the folder of photos. We'll come back to that later. But now I'm gonna create a folder within my folder, and this is gonna say like full page, and then I'll say five point, well actually it's a six by 10, six by tens, because that's how big the photo will like total be with here. Hopefully this is making sense, you guys. It's gonna be a probably a long video, but you know, it'll be good, hopefully. So now I'm gonna take all, actually, let's move this folder down so it's out of my way. Take all my photos like this, and I'm gonna put them into preview. Hopefully previews around here. Okay, so preview, this is just a Mac thing. This is just so I can click through each photo and like see them in like a full format. So they're probably out of order because of the way I dragged them, and now we're getting a little pinwheel of death. Also, like, I'm eternally getting told I don't have enough space. It's so fun. Okay, so I'm just going to thumb through these pictures, and if any of them stand out to me as, like, I love this, I want it to be a full-page photo, I will pull that into my little full-page photo folder that I just created. So you guys will get to see pictures. Like, this is a really good one. I like that one a lot. That's a potential. That's a good one. That one's fun. So this is, like, the same picture. I think that I posted on my Instagram a couple of these. So this is like the edited versus the unedited one. But let's see, like that's a really beautiful photo. And I also, with a photo like this, I intentionally like to leave a lot of sky so I could add like journaling he here. Oh, sorry, I just choked. <laughs> I could add journaling here, but I could also add a smaller photo potentially, like maybe three littler photos that could be cute on there. So I'm gonna have to get creative. Sorry, this is so annoying. The no space warning. I want to have to get, or I'm going to have to get creative with this album because again, it's the confined amount of space in this journal. So I'm going to have to find ways to add photos without having to make each photo be on its own separate page because I just don't have enough space. So that's kind of a good idea. That's a potential. Um, oh, look, that's, I didn't realize I did this. I saw this photo and I was like, I love this photo. I know I posted it on Instagram, but I don't remember how I got rid of these people here. But if you look, they get they get deleted. I don't know who I had do that. Maybe my brother West. One of my brothers is a graphic designer and the other one is a photographer. So probably one of them did it, but that's really funny. Okay, well, obviously I'm not gonna use this one because it has people in it. No offense to the nice people. Um. Okay. So then those are the photos from the plane. That was a cute picture of like our little cabin. A walk with the family. Cooking dinner. This is such a cute picture of some of my brothers. That's another really pretty picture. Okay, so then the other thing is when I take photos on trips, something I recommend, if you don't know how you're going to document it before you go, and even if you do have an idea of what you think you might document it, I am really driven, like my albums are really driven by my content. So if I have a lot of landscape photos, I'm more likely going to want to work in a landscape size. If I bring home a piece of ephemera that I love and it's really small or really big, I want my album to accommodate that. So I don't typically go into trips being like, I'm going to make a six by eight album with page protectors for this trip. I will like go on the trip and then I'll come home assess all of my stuff and decide based on that. So while I'm on the trip, I'm pretty much always doc gonna document every trip I go on, especially like bigger trips, but I will take photos like this where I took it portrait and then I took it landscape because I love having a photo like this where it's like showing the scenery and I wanna be able to use it in my album. Now, of course, I could take a photo that's portrait like this and crop it to be landscape like this and vice versa, I could take a photo like this and crop it to be portrait, you know? But it's also nice when you have a chance to take both, you know, it doesn't take that much time. Okay, sorry, we're still going through. And then there's photos like this where it's my brother sitting on a bench and this is the first one I take took and this is the second one. 
or maybe vice versa. So the lighting is kind of more fun and sunny here, but I like the like framing of this better. I like that there's a bit of sky showing and stuff like that. But again, these aren't essential photos. It does tell a bit of the story, like we woke up and then we went here and then we went there type of thing. But I don't think this is an essential photo to have in my story because I do have photos of them elsewhere documented. So anyways, just thinking. And then this is a cool photo because we took the lift, the chairlift, because it's a ski site. Sorry, we're in Sundance, Utah. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, but we took a lift up during the springtime because it's obviously not snowing while we were there. And so this is a picture of the lift passes. And I also brought home the physical lift passes to include. So I thought that was cute. Could be a fun thing to include. And then little selfies. Like this isn't the best picture in the world. You can't really see the background, but it's more about the people. So that's a photo that I might include in a smaller size. Anyways, I feel like, you know, that's really pretty too. This is a really good one. I think I'm gonna include one of these full size my mom taking selfies, and then these cute little photos of me. I took a bunch of ones, which now are not, they're not in order, but there's some food we ate. I think that I have some photos, like a series of photos like this. Whoops, too fast. And I think I might make those smaller and include them in an area. Anyways, so hopefully this is making sense to you guys. But yeah, then we went, um, what's it called? We went go-karting, we went on a hike. Let's see, more scenery. This is pretty too. This could be a pretty full page one. Christian and I, more of when we went tubing. And then this is like a family photo. Although I'm bummed this picture turned out blurry because whoever took it, I think Christian took the photo, didn't wipe the lens of the camera first. Also, we all look like bums. We're like about to go to the airport. So anyways, okay, so hopefully that made sense to you guys. Now we're going to go back and I'm going to decide on which pictures I think I want to do full size. I think I want to do this one full size. Is it this one or is it a different one? I think there might be two of them. No. Okay. So I want to do, where'd it go? This one. Yeah, I think I want to do this one full size. And then there's these little pictures of me that I want to put on it smaller, like in this little, so this is going to be like a 5.5 by 8.5. I want to put smaller photos on top of it of me, I think, because I'm posing like in this general area. So there's one. Here's one of them. I'm just going to put these over here. Here's maybe this one. Maybe I didn't put all three in my, ended up uploading all three. Okay, but to see if you have an idea of what I'm thinking, it would be kind of like, okay, I have to show you in Canva. But anyways, I guess I could show you that right now. So I'm going to upload, whoops, the picture that I know I want full sized and I'm going to put it here and then I will stretch it to the height and then I will crop it as needed. So looking at the picture, I kind of think it like that. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm covering that gray box perfectly so I know it's the right size and then I will put this as... So it's the Altered Journal Utah Trip. So I'm going to say Altered Journal Utah Trip. And then I will say 6 by 10, 1. So I know that when I order it, I know that this is for this album. And then this is a 6 by 10. So when I put it into Persnickety, I know which size to make this. And then I put 1 because I'm going to have more than 1. So then I will download that. And then I will move it to my desktop. And then that's good. So I could also work on, oh, maybe I'll show you the idea I was thinking of just so you can see theoretically what it would look like, which also I could do this digitally rather than physically, which could keep it a little flatter. So let's see, I would make them like little and I would put them like this. And I'd want them to be the same size, I think. Like that. That can be kind of cute. What do we think? 
because you can see it's the same view and like the sky doesn't need to be part of it really. What size is this? 1.9. Kind of like that. And I kind of think it'd be cute to print it right onto the page. Because then I wouldn't have to like stick them down. It would just be pre-done. I kind of like that as an option. Okay, we'll call this 1.5 and we'll decide that later. And we'll just save it for now. So as you can see, this is like kind of a really slow process. It takes a lot of time, but all of this upfront organizing and planning is sort of, I have to do it because I order my print pictures this way. I can't just like print as I go because then I would have to wait like a week to get my photos every time I started a layout. I like to have all of my stuff with me as soon as I start the album. But it also helps me because once I get all of my photos printed, I don't have any thinking left to really do. I can just be creative and start making my album because I have all the photos designed and like I'm thinking like okay I like this photo a lot so I want to be a big photo or this is more of an ad a little smaller photo or I want to have these three photos together it kind of does a lot of the thinking ahead for me so I don't have to focus on that when I'm trying to just be creative and put together the album so I think I'm going to also make an album inside here and say like scenery Ooh, except for do I even know how to spell Ooh, how do you spell scenery this is embarrassing I'm just going to say scene because I don't want to spell it wrong and embarrass myself. And I'm going to put all the photos in here that are scenery, because I took a lot of those. We we're in a very beautiful place. And that way, I can decide which to keep and which that I do not want to keep, because I have a lot. And I don't need to have all of them. I also don't really have room for all of them. So this is not something I necessarily do every time I make a scrapbook, where I would put like a scenery folder together. But with this specific trip, there was a lot of scenery-type photos taken. I also want to decide which of those I want to keep. And then I will go through and be like, okay, this is a photo of where we were staying. It's not that pretty of a picture, but I do like that it's portrait because that's the landscape that I'm using in this photo. That one's cool. This is the same one again. This one has more of a story to it, so I'm more inclined to incorporate that. That one is like cool. I mean, obviously this place is beautiful. I'm kind of think, th thinking that the only one I love is the one that I already used. So like, I don't need these two. This one's pretty of the hike. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get rid of these two because I already have that one. And then I think I might keep this one. I don't love this one, even though it's the only one from this like angle. I'm not obsessed with it, so we don't need it. Also, this album I'm using does have a lot of really beautiful photos of the site. The only thing I like about this one is the blue space that I could use to incorporate like smaller photos or journaling on. I'm going to get rid of these two. So these are my scenery ones that I'm going to keep for now. Then I have like this one, a picture of the plane. And then I also have it like zoomed in. So another thing to consider. I think this overall is a better picture, but this kind of tells a story of being in the plane. So something to consider, it's a decision I can't make right now. <laughs> but, you know, again, I could put, sorry, I could put like on the way, here we go. I could do that digitally. I could use some of my like physical ephemera or physical scrapbooking supplies to do that. I could obviously do the same thing here. I could also like write alongside the plane wing. I'm always trying to think of like creative ways to with the photos. Um, okay, so now I'm going to do a new folder, and I'm going to say small. So these are for the photos that I want to include, but it's not necessarily like the best photo. I just think it'd be cute to include. So this is like a photo of the cabin, of the interior of the cabin we were in, and it was like very old-timey, cute, kitschy cabin sort of style. You can see me. I'm right there taking the picture. <laughs> I just noticed that. Um, so I, I have had a couple of photos. This is the only one I really loved. And I wanted to incorporate this part of the story. So I like this photo a lot. I think it's cute, but it's not like a hugely important image. I do want to incorporate it, but I think it can be small. So that'll be a small. Another one is like us cooking. I also will like pair photos together. So these are both photos of us in the kitchen. This is another photo that's like shows the cabin a bit. And then this is a photo of us cooking in the cabin or like what something we made. So those could all go together. This is outside the cabin. This is when we went on a walk. This is also outside the cabin. 
This I want to be full page. It's the big group photo. This one is horizontal. And these people are all right here. So like, do I need to incorporate that photo too? I don't know. This is my thought process, you guys. This is how it works for my brain. This is another scenery photo that I don't think I need. We'll trash it. And this looks like another scenery-ish photo. See, like, that's really pretty outside the cabin. But do I need it? Probably not. We'll put it up here with outside the cabin pile. So, yeah. And then these are all from when we went um, rafting, rafting, rafting. This is another, I think I want full page. This is another outside the cabin. This is all from the same time. This is from the hike we went on. Hike, hike, hike. Those look like 16 of the same photos to me. Two more rafting photos. This is a hike photo. Rafting. Can all be here. So like there's way too many photos of rafting. It was like a two hour ordeal and it did not need to have 65,000 photos. Okay. More hike. More rafting. This is another one that could be tiny and tiny. This one's gonna be full page. So we'll put it here and we'll move this up. So it gets crazy in here, but this is just how my brain works. I'm a very visual person. Ooh, do I wanna incorporate this photo or the color's too different? I mean, it's also from the same view. Could be cool. Should we look back at Canva and see what we think? So this is a photo from my brother's Instagram story. It's like a cool picture of one of my other brothers. And then I would put this smaller. Okay, so I kind of like having some space between them. So I think I'd have to either crop them in, which there's not a ton of room for cropping on the other ones, or just make them smaller. And I don't mind that the center one's a different width because it's different than the other pictures. And then I also like something to consider is like why I put this one on this side versus this one. I feel like because my arm is going this way, it encourages you to look in and then I'm facing this way, which encourages you to look in. So I kind of like the photos to be working towards the center, if you will. So I'll center this one. Oops and then I will scooch these ones accordingly. Okay, so that's an option as well. And I think it'd be a really good place for me to put like a physical embellishment, oops, title right above it. I could also put, you know, okay. We'll put, we'll call this 1.75 because it's still another option. And that way I'm getting four photos on one page without having to add any additional bulk. It's only the bulk of one photo. So that's a cool option. So let's see here. These are gonna be put, all three of these, even though I incorporated potentially all three of these, it's not 100% decided yet. So I'm gonna put them in the small category. I think I'm gonna make the decision that I don't need these photos because it doesn't really tell any story. I wouldn't have any journaling about it. We're just waiting for a bus down to the bottom of the mountain. So we don't need those. This is another one that's like a funny story, but I don't think it's that important. We went on a walk. Well, so wait, this one I like. This is a photo of us on a walk in the neighborhood, which is cute. My mom's like pointing at something. My brothers are all looking. I like it. This is another part of our walk where the boys just stopped and we didn't know why. We realized that this kid is playing video games and you can see it through the window. And my brother's like stopped to watch the game that he was playing, which I thought was very funny. But I don't think that this story, it's like a sub story. It's a cute memory. I don't think it's essential to the album when I am so limited on space. So I'm going to put that into the trash for now. This would be small. This would probably be pretty small. Okay, also, like, I swear I have multiple of this photo. So let's see. This photo and this photo. Okay, so it looks like I slightly lightened this one. So I'm going to get rid of the other one. I must have posted this on Instagram. I don't typically edit my photos unless they really need it. But when I use the photos that I've posted on Instagram sometimes, um, I will edit those because it's usually a smaller amount of photos. And... 
um, it's just nice because it's less work, but I already get the benefit of it. So this is an, uh, I don't know yet picture. I like that one. I love this one, but I don't want it to be full page. So I'm going to see just visually what size I think will look good on the, because I know this is the full page of the album. I want to see how this photo looks on this size orientation, if that makes sense. So I'm going to put it here and then like this is a 4 by 5.3, which is kind of a good size. So like maybe a 4 by 6 would be a good size. But I also sort of hate using regular size photos, like typical. 4.5 by 3.5 is kind of cute. I kind of like that idea, 4.5 by 3.5. Um, let's see if I can edit the size of the photo. Oh, here we go, 4.5. 4.3 is there a 4 by 6 there's got to be a 4 by 6 you'd think right no how weird what's freeform mean I don't know okay look at me trying to show you guys stuff I've never done why is there a 4.5 but not a 4 by 6 that doesn't make any sense okay whatever we're not going to do that okay 3 by 4 I'm so dumb I was saying 4 by 6 you guys this is Four by six is way bigger. I do not want it to be four by six. So I think three by four might be a good option because I don't want, I want to be able to use the background. Okay, so we're gonna make a new folder now and it's gonna be three by fours. So small to me is smaller than a three by four. So I'm gonna put this in here because I like it and it's gonna be a three by four. Um, what about these? So of these, I think this is a cute-ish photo, but it's kind of blurry. No one's really looking, so we're going to get rid of it. And then this is a photo of food we made, but it's not like a, from some special restaurant moment. It's just like we made a burrata salad, so I don't think we need it. And that makes it really easy to use these two, which is a funny photo. And this photo of Bo and Max cooking. And Bo is a chef, and Max is not, and Bo is like backseat shop chopping right here which is kind of funny so i think these photos both would be good as a three by four they both go good together and that makes it easy to put them right here so let's put these folders kind of together more okay let's look through these hike photos and decide which ones we need to keep and which ones we don't okay so i'm definitely gonna keep that one what's the difference between these two photos is my question one's bigger one's smaller Okay, we'll get rid of the smaller one, get rid of the one with the people in it because we definitely don't need those. Okay, this is the one we want. So we're gonna get rid of this one and we're gonna get rid of this one. I also really like this guy of Christian and I. Christian is my little brother's like best friend and he came with us on this trip. This photo is like fine, I look kind of dumb. I don't think I need it. It doesn't really tell much of the story. Okay, but then again, here's two of the same photos. So this must have been posted on Instagram. Which one do we think has an edit on it? You can see I'm a really light editor. I'm just gonna go with the smaller one is gonna get trashed. So eight, nine, we'll get rid of this guy. We'll save this guy. And then just like that, we're down to three photos. This one I also don't need. So we can get rid of it. And now we have just two photos from this wonderful moment. So I think this one's cool. We're definitely gonna get this one. Definitely gonna get these. I could go through these ones next. So do you guys see what I'm doing here? I'm like going through, paring down, what makes sense? What do I have room for? What tells the best story? What's important? And then from there I'm like, okay, does this need to be a huge photo or can this be a small photo? Is this a duplicate? Um, is this necessary to the story, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm going to give you guys a little break from listening to me talk and I will come back once I have all the photos organized and ready to order. And I will show you guys what that looks like. Okay, you guys. So I went ahead and went through, eliminated whatever photos I decided I didn't need, narrowed them down to my favorites. And then when I th went through and put each photo through Canva and cropped them appropriately to the size they needed and then sorted them all back in this ready to print folder on my desktop. 
So if you go up here, you can see an example. I did some four by six photos. Well, I used the four by six size to make three by fours as well as like this is an example of some of those small prints I talked about where they're smaller than a three by four. I just positioned them accordingly on a four by six. I also went ahead and did some five by five um, photos as an option for some of the photos I wanted to be bigger without being full size, but I didn't want to make them exactly a four by six. I wanted them to be a more of a unique size. So I did some five by fives and then of course some more full page photos in the six by 10 size, which I had talked about earlier. So I have them all photos, all cropped up and ready to go in this folder. And then I went ahead and uploaded that folder to a new album in my persnickety account so you can see it's the altered journal sundance utah trip september 2022 so all my photos are here that i ordered or that i've i'm ready to order and i click select all order prints i will use photographic prints and then i will do a detailed order a quick order is good if you're using all the photos in one size because you can do that all in one click but of course i'm doing a couple different sizes so now when i click choose print sizes it shows all the options i have but because I have labeled them by the size they need to be ordered, this is why I made it a six by 10 rather than like the 5.5 by 8.5, which is what the size of the image is. I did it a six by 10 so I knew that's what size I need to select in here because it is being printed on a larger piece of paper because I don't have the exact size I need. So I'll just click that, apply, and then go through and do that to all my photos. It's a little bit of like a process to go through, but when you do it like this, when you're printing a lot of photos on smaller paper or like a lot of smaller photos on a bigger piece of paper, this is three photos. So I'm doing this one click for three photos essentially. So this would be a four by six, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is a really good thing. The whole like labeling them by size is great because sometimes this process takes a while and I don't do it all in one sitting on one day. And so if I am in this process here, and I stop and come back to it, I don't have to remember what size I wanted each photo to be because I already have labeled them five by five, four by six, six by 10, et cetera. So that is pretty much it. I would do this to all my photos and then order them. And typically I wouldn't just order one project at a time. I'd order like photos for my project life album. I'd order these photos and whatever else I'm working on at the time or hoping to be working on soon. I think if you do like, $60, you get free shipping. So I would usually spend that much money on photos at a time. So it's just the way to make it most cost effective. Um, I also have used the persnickety print credits where you can, they have sales. So like all four by sixes will be 50% off and you can buy print credits. So you can buy like a hundred print credits, which would be, or I guess you buy one print credit, which is for like a hundred photos. And then that 100 photos will be at the 50% off rate, but you don't have to order them now. So I'm gonna use my print credits today and um, get discounted prices on these four by six photos, even though that sale has now ended. It like, you pay for the sale up front, if that makes sense. Anyways, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a little long and chatty, but I feel like there's a lot of good information here. Um, this is not something I see, this background technique, that obviously everyone has to somehow get their photos off their phone or camera onto their computer and then printed but it's not a process that I've seen shared a lot on YouTube. So I wanted to share it. I think it's obviously so important. And again, like this is just the way I do it. So I hope you're able to, even if you don't do the exact same way as me, you're able to pull some ideas, some inspiration and use it as a jumping off point to potentially rethink the way you order photos or give you some more creativity, especially if you print at home or don't print at home because I feel like a lot of people print at home. Most people I know print at home. I don't. So it's a good resource for those of you who don't print at home. And even if you do print at home, you can use the same concepts to, you know, maybe re better organize your photos. I think that photo organization is something that we all struggle with, but it's really important, especially for memory keeping to make sure you're not losing photos and you get to use all the ones you want to use in your albums. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, let me know if you have any questions below, if you have any other ways you guys do stuff for ordering photos. And if you have any summer trips planned, I really want to hear about that or maybe what you're planning to document this summer. So make sure to give it a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next one. Maybe soon we'll be actually working on these photos once I get them delivered to my house. So I will catch you in the next one. Have a great rest of your day.
Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.